Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the discussion, American Bases in Australia. Too close for comfort, more of them, more important, binding us tightly, and we're still a target. Our speakers on this subject are Dennis Doherty, who has been the coordinator of the Australian Anti-Bases Campaign Coalition since 1988 and a teacher all his life. Our um, logo is deliberately in the Aboriginal colours and it always has been because these are the ab colours of the Aboriginal flag because the US bases, as is all of Australia, are on, are on Aboriginal land. Now while we're in this mode slightly of remembering uh, our people, I want to pay um, respect to Ray Jackson who recently died. Um, Ray was a great activist for the Koori people of, of Sydney and uh, New South Wales and um, some of you may have read the report about him in the Herald uh, last week. I also would like to pay respects to Hal Alexander, a white fellow who was one of the um, early people in the anti-basis campaign. He um, came, he did a lot of very good things for the working class and for uh, for the anti-basis movement. His most spect spectacular thing was that he, he and three others rode uh, bicycles down the main um, air runway strip of uh, Alice Springs Airport to prevent the US plane, a huge US uh, transport plane from landing. So we remember Hal Alexander and remember Ray. So if we have 10 seconds of silence to remember those uh, great uh, great leaders who went before us. Of course I um, thank also the people, the organisers of the politics in the pub. They've done a great job over many years and uh, keeping the, the left in Sydney informed and active and I thank them again. Um, SBS presenter Scott McIntyre um, got his head chopped off very pretty smartly when he dared to question in a personal tweet the orgy of Anzac Day. His tweet was this. Uh, um, his tweet was the cultivation of an imperialist invasion of a foreign nation that Australia had no quarrel with is against all ideals of modern society. Australians never ask, why were we there in Turkey? Because the answer is not very edifying. We were there because the British told us to go there. When we left Albany, we thought we were defending the motherland. Um, and uh, the British said, now go to the Dardanelles. And um, they didn't know that the British had made a secret agreement with the Tsar, who was known at the time as the most despotic ruler in, in Europe. The uh, agreement was that the Brits would handle over the Straits and Constantinople to the Russians and the, uh, the Russians would allow the British a free go in Iraq to the oil, the oil, um, um, the oil um, uh, resources there. And um, behind, so behind the decision of Britain going to war were the oil companies. Standard Oil, Dutch Royal Shell. These were the companies behind. And if we were running a campaign in 1915, April 1915, we could very, very simply have worn a badge, no blood for oil, no Australian blood for oil. And those nasty, dirty decisions made behind our back didn't cost the oil companies anything, but they cost the Australian people an immense amount. 60,000 dead, 150,000 wounded, three, nearly 400,000 people enlisted. The cost of the war was 15 uh, federal budgets. 15 federal budgets went on that war, all to support a company such as this. Um, the, uh, the lessons that we should be drawing from Antec is that we should not follow blindly a superpower. 
because they're going to rub our nose in it. Unfortunately, our politicians have not learned that lesson. And, they, and now we find ourselves up to our ears in bases. Our military spending is bizarrely exorbitant to please not the British, but now the US. Some people imagine that um, being a peace activist is, um, is a fairly benign word and does not con convey any dynamism but, or any status. They might think it, it, it uh, refers to looking over a pretty valley or looking over a seascape and they go, oh, isn't that peaceful? Isn't that lovely? So some people have, got, have, have taken to saying, oh, look, let's, let's say peace with justice to give this statement a bit of oomph. And when you put peace and activists together, it's even worse because they think, God, those two words are horrible words, um, especially the word activist. But if you, um, if you, if you uh, want to be a peace activist, it's, a, it's a, a life of hard work. As you, as you heard, I've been doing this since 1988. And uh, I'll give you a chance later to assess how, how well we've gone. Um, one, uh, one wise man once said, if you want quick results, go and grow cabbages. Um, another person at, the, at a recent meeting said to me, he was surprised that a person my age, 21, uh, gave a damn. He actually said gave a shit. Um, my aim tonight is that you should give a damn, that you should give a shit about what's happening to this country and how we are totally caught up by this enormous weight of a, of a, of a superpower that is running the country uh, and, and diverting the country's resources, not for the good of our people, not for the good of their people, but for the 1%. That's why we have the 99% up there. You, the 99%, have to stand up and say, enough's enough. The US acts for the rapacious corporations within its borders. It doesn't act in our interests. And, that's, and, and we say, they work for the 1%. Or well, they might work for the 0.1% of this society. How has the anti-base gone on informing, activating and alarming the general population, uh, the, the progressive population? At first blush, and to use the anal and analogy we've been using prior to this, we could say we've been going pretty shit house. Um, we can trace our, our, our beginnings to 1987. And when we started in 1987, we put our t-shirt that went like this. Um, close Pine Gap, close Naranga, Northwest Cape, and the 27 other bases. Since that time, if we had to re-draft re, uh, that t-shirt, we'd have to say this. Close Pine Gap, close Northwest Cape, and the 50 other bases. At the same time, kick out the training bases, kick the US Marines out of Darwin, forbid the use of our land for drones, any use of our airports for the, Royal, uh, for the US Air Force, and our harbours for the US Navy. As you can see, the T-shirt be beginning rather wordy at this stage. By any me measure, this is a gross failure on the part of anti bases. We started with 27, now there's 50, and on top of that, we now have Marines, drones, US Navy, US Air Force, and on top of that, they're using these bases to spy on us. Um, Glenn Greenwald, uh, who was the main journalist who Snowden contacted, said this I quote from his book called No Place to Hide. The Five Eyes relationship. Do people know who the Five Eyes are? Yes. Um, well, the Five Eyes are the Anglo-Saxons. That's the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the United Kingdom. They're the Five Eyes. The Five Eyes relationship is so close 
that member governments place the NSA's de uh, desires above the privacy of their own citizens. The Guardian reported on one 2007 agreement, for instance, describing an agreement that allowed the agency to unmask and to hold on to the personal data about Britons that had previously been off limits. Um, and then again in 2007, they changed the rules to allow the NSA to analyse and retain any British citizen's mobile phone, fax numbers, emails and IP addresses that they had swept up in their dragnet. And that sounds pretty bad, what the British government did to the British people. But then he said the next paragraph says, going a step further in 2011, the Australian government, see, really that Anzac spirit, um, the Australian government explicitly pleaded with the NSA to extend their partnership and subject, subject more Australian citizens to, um, to greater surveillance. In a, in a February 21st memo, um, the acting director, just the acting director, the acting deputy director of the NSA, I'm oh, sorry, of the DSD, made this request. It does, and when you read the letter, there doesn't appear to be any agreement from the government, he just did it off his own bat. He said, oh, you know, we're in a bad way, extend, extend the surveillance and, and, and take up more of the Australians, uh, the, the Australian citizens' personal um, details. So, um, in the heyday of, um, again, in the heyday of the uh, any basis campaign, we could put 2,000 people into the into the desert around Pine Gap or Narunga. Just uh, go over that one, and then that one. And that one, and that one, that one. Okay, um, in the heyday, we wiped the footy finals off the, uh, off the uh, Sunday papers. The, uh, so many of our activists got into one of the bases that they sent the army in. And this was front page news, which was more important than the AFL results in Melbourne, Adelaide, and so other, and so on, and the rugby league results in Sydney. So, anyway, activists in, uh, anti basis activists in uh, Australia could sort of whinge about all the obstacles to achieve our objectives. We could say we have little money versus the unlimited billions of the pro-US group. We could say we get no publicity. Both major parties are so pro uh, the US president, uh, so pro the US President Obama could say a thing as, he, as what he said of the Australian soldiers in Darwin when he announced the pivot to Asia and the US Marines to be stationed in Darwin. Now, I hope you're proud of this, everyone. This is what he said. Afghanistan, I know many of you were served there, including the proud members of Brigade One. Like generations before you, you have lived and served alongside your American colleagues. Day in and day out, you work together so well, it's often said you can't tell where our guys end and your guys begin. So is that, Obama thinks that we're so united you can't tell us apart. So is this what we want for our country? Surely we've got a more rounded and independent country than that. Looking at the shortcomings of the anti-basis campaign, we could see we, we could see the view, uh, the assessment at the moment is pretty bleak. In our academia, believe it or not, people study the anti-basis, the social movements such as the anti-basis. And um, um, one such academic, Aidan Ricketts, um, of Southern Cross University, um, said, said in a lecture that when activists come crying to him about they're burnt out, that they're getting nowhere. Uh, he says, don't, don't worry about that. Look at what your enemies are saying about you. And then uh, draw conclusions from that. Draw your encouragement from that. Um, 
One such enemy was Malcolm Fraser. That was burnout, out, by the way. That's why I had that. That was from a bushfire. The, so when you're burned out and look like a bushfire, uh, anyway, here's Malcolm Fraser. He was our, one of our main enemies for a long time. And um, he was a devotee of the US Alliance. And um, he, um, he came in such a you know, 180 degree turn that it was amazing. This book is so significant, and he, he wrote a book called Dangerous Allies. This book is so significant that we should have two new initial clusters. We should have uh, BF and AF, before Fraser and after Fraser. Bef before Fraser, you know, a Liberal Party person saying they lied to me about Vietnam, they lied to me about Iraq. Uh, you know, you think, well, when are we going to, let's station some more troops in Iraq. Why? Because the Americans have asked us. But they lied to us about Vietnam. <laughs> the British lied to us. <laughs> and yet we keep doing it. Um, another enemy was, um, was David Rosenberg. Now, David Rosenberg, I went to He's issued this book here. It's called Inside Pine Gap. He was a US operative at Pine Gap, and, he had, and his book has the permission of the CIA and the Australian government. And I went to the launch of the book. I thought, oh, I'll go down and see what this bloke's saying. He's been in, he was in Pine Gap for 17 years. And he was one of these Americans who think Aussies are funny, you know, like he, he'd say um, things like, I really enjoy Aussies, the soul, they love playing golf together. We had a wonderful time in Alice Springs, we're playing golf. And he talked about golf all the time. He didn't talk about his work. Anyway, so I got up and asked him a question. I said, um, what, um, what, what do you feel about the fact that your information was responsible for the bunker that got hit in Gulf War One, killing about 150 civilians. Oh, he said, with now a moment's hesitation, or shame. He went, oh, he said, this, uh, this is uh, nothing to do with me. I give the military the information, what they do with it, that's their fault. Nothing to do with me. Anyway, this is, this is what he said about his book. By writing of this book, I hope to provide more understanding of what Pine Gap does and all the necessity of maintaining ever vigilant eyes and ears that protect the lives of everyday Australians and Americans, including soldiers, that protect us wherever they may serve. Now we know, we know from the Snowden revelation, that's a bald based lie. It doesn't do that at all. It doesn't protect us, it spies on us. It doesn't do that. This is what turned Malcolm. It doesn't protect American lives. It, it, it targets civilians in Yemen and so on for their drone campaign. That's what it does. Now, why do they lie like that? Because they have to justify themselves. Because of citizens like us, that I, I can't, you know, any basis can't take the, you know, we're on a, a budget of $5. Uh, you know, we can't take the full credit. But this is the sort of thing that we can take some pride in. Now, another way we could look at the, assess how we're going, is that when we approached Pine Gap, um, some of you may remember that in 1983, that was before any basis was formed, uh, there was a women's camp at Pine Gap. Now, when the women came to the, to the gates of Pine Gap, they were confronted with a cattle fence, which was about this high, waist high. They just took, the women just went, Shroom. they smashed the fence off, they smashed it to pieces, the gate, everything, they took it with them, and in, in they marched. When we got there in 1987, the uh, gates were a lot stronger, and the fence was two metres high, and it extended a couple, 200 metres to the right and 200 metres to the left then it became a, a cattle fence again. And there were cameras going like this at the front gate. And each year, 
the securities got bigger and bigger and bigger. So now you have this. This, this is one kilometre from the fence of Pine Gap. Now remember, the fence, the gate at Pine Gap, is seven kilometres from the base. So you can't go within one kilometre of the base. That's as soon as you see that sign, you're supposed to stop if, you, if you're not if you're not authorised and turn around. That's that's the rules. That's partly the effect, and they didn't do that because of the IS. They didn't do that because of of, of, of uh, Al Qaeda. They did it because of people like Andy Basis. Um, so you know we, we haven't gone too badly. Is it enough? Of course it's not enough. But there's no reason to cut our wrists and to, uh, you know, uh, whinge about burnout. Abbott keeps talking about the fight is coming to us, so we're going to go out there and take the fight to them. Well, this, uh, this was the, um, I'm sorry, I got the slides out of order, but this was the <coughs> comics view of, the cartoons view of the Narunga, when Narunga uh, happened that when a, a person got into Narunga went inside all the ray domes. Um, this was one view of the uh, one cartoon's view and the next cartoon's view. Look mummy we're on TV. So anyway so this is the fight coming towards you. Back to that. Um, well, yeah, I've really got these out of order. I'm sorry about that. Um, could you um, get that map up? Is there a map there? There should be a map. That's it. Okay, so this is the fight coming towards you. Talisman Saver. Talisman Saver happens every two years. It's a hundred million dollars, more or less. It includes 30 US, 30,000 US and Australian troops. And they go all over the place, bush bashing and whatever. And it starts down here, down at RAAF Richmond. And it goes all the way around to the Northern Territory. There's uh, people coming out and, uh, you know, pretending to bomb US uh, and Australian warships and vice versa. And then there are people coming ashore at Shoalwater Bay. Um, so, Shoalwater, the main, the main exercise, um, sorry, before I go on, the, main, the aim of the exercise is, as Obama says, to blur the difference between US and Australian troops to use the N-word, interoperability. They train to invade other countries through tropical jungles, through savannah woodlands, through other climate zones, so as to be ready to go where the US leads. The main focus is always around Rockhampton, where the Shoalwater Bay training area is. Um, this is uh, some Americans coming ashore at the last uh, Talisman Sabre exercise. The main focus is around there. But there are many more sites, including Richmond RWF base, from where uh, training arises. And this military exercise is really sinister because it includes, it includes um, elements of, of, the civilian, of the civilian population, uh, the police, the federal police, uh, the rescue services, these and the state police are involved in all this. They, they try and uh, justify their actions by saying we're coordinating uh, rescue in case of humanitarian uh, <coughs> troubles in our region. They're not doing too well in, Rock, uh, in uh, Nepal at the moment. And when we go out to protest, the mainstream media has their strategy, strategy is that the protests in Rockhampton are a central Queensland issue. They're nothing to do with, with Australia. Even though it's a federal government decision to have this exercise, it's nothing to do with Sydney, nothing to do with Brisbane and Melbourne and so on. So we've, we've been up there many times and uh, in various, since 1997, uh, holding these uh, protests against Talisman Sabre. Um, so, the peace movement is uh, trying to counter that this year and uh, trying to put on rallies in Sydney about it and rallies in Brisbane. 
we uh, we ask that you you try and get to something about Talisman Saver in July of this year. There is a very important there is a very important uh, conference in Brisbane on July 8. This is happening, but I, I'm not sure whether I said that earlier. This is happening in July of this year. Um, we uh, we ask that you, you care because the alliance robs our people of the resources for ourselves and our near neighbours. If you could get that F-35 up again, uh, I'm sorry about this. Um, you can see this is a cartoonist view of what the F-35, uh, this is $16 billion, and to keep them running for five years will be, another, will be five times, will, will be the cost again. So that's. 30 or 40 or 50 billion dollars going to those uh, aircraft. And you see that the, uh, all the things underneath the, uh, the wings, things like the NDIS, Gonski, Medicare, this is what, this is what that, this is where it's going. So if you, if you, if you are having trouble having a nose operation or, or a new pair of glasses because you're a pensioner, that's where it's going. So you can be relaxed, it's going to uh, Grumman a huge US company. So don't worry, you won't need them. They're, they're going to blow up someone for you. So just, just put up with it. Um, so, if you keep going. Um, five minutes. Ah, plenty of time. Um, as I said before, the major um, Action is in Brisbane and then on to Rockhampton. But in Brisbane, there's a conference. Keynote speaker is uh, Senator Scott London. Um, the peace movement is also, uh, and, and the uh, uh, under the present guise of the Independent Peaceful Australia Network (IPN), is supporting a major attempt by a hundred pilgrims to violate the sacred bombing ground of uh, the U.S. and Australian military. And there's further information on these actions. You may not be in the condition to go lolloping around uh, the Shoalwater Bay training area uh, wait, uh, and uh, living rough for two or three days uh, while 30,000 troops wait for you to be found. So if you can't do that, there are things on in Sydney uh, about this, about this uh, uh, travesty. So in the face of this overwhelming devotion, this current devotion to militarism that we have, to have witnessed, we have to redouble our efforts for the alternative, and the alternative is peace. Talisman, so, uh, so, so I've already mentioned Talisman Sabre. Hiroshima Day, it's its 70th anniversary. Uh, it's something that we should be uh, putting a, a, a great uh, deal of effort into. We have projects on the on the board uh, about metadata, about the F rejecting F thirty fives, Talisman Saber, Marines out of Darwin, and we're always pleased to help uh, to accept any help if you are keen on any of those sort of projects. Our strategy must be to work against Australia's massive military spending, to resist the U.S. military in this country, and to bring the troops home. There are so many levels on which you contribute, from liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, and of course a financial contribution we are pretty appreciated. And of course, full on being a member of the committee. You could even buy this wonderful t-shirt that I'm modelling. But anyway, so thank you very much everyone. This is, it's time to push back against this uh, giant US uh, takeover of our country. Thank you.